Gary was eager to make it home from his work trip. He initially planned to return in early January, but due to finishing his tasks ahead of schedule, he was able to come back sooner. He was delighted with the outcome as it meant he could celebrate the new year with his beloved wife in their cozy home. He had bought the house before they tied the knot, ensuring everything was in order for Cynthia when she moved in. For a long time he searched for his dream home and looked at numerous properties. Eventually, the one that stood out was this one due to its beauteous design, cozy vibes, and the fact that it had all their essentials nearby. Gary suspected that Cynthia hadn't made any arrangements for the New Year's party they were going to have. His suspicions were confirmed when she told him on the phone the previous night that she couldn't find any joy without him by her side. She then declared that she would rather celebrate in her dreams with him there. Gary felt a deep sense of remorse upon hearing Cynthia's words, he had been away on a business trip, leaving her to celebrate the holidays all by herself. Although he had tried his best to keep in touch with her over the phone, he knew that it wasn't the same as being there with her in person. He wanted to make it up to her by creating a special celebration for the two of them. With this in mind, Gary made a stop at the store to pick up some essentials for their New Year's celebre. As he walked through the Alesh, he carefully selected sausages, salads, and champagne to create a festive atmosphere. He even added a bouquet of Cynthia's favorite flowers to brighten up the table and show her how much he cared. Filled with love and anticipation. Gary hopped into a taxi and hurried home, eager to surprise her. When he arrived, he was so excited that he didn't even bother to ring the doorbell. Instead, he used his key and quietly entered the. As he made his way to the kitchen, he carefully placed the bags of goodies on the counter trying to make as little noise as possible. He then tiptoed towards the bedroom thinking that Cynthia was probably fast asleep, but when he gently pushed open the door, he was surprised to find that she wasn't there. Gary felt a sudden pang of worry. He wondered where his wife could be at this time of night. He stood there for a moment, unsure of what to do next. Gary felt confused when he tried to call Cynthia, but her phone wasn't. He found it strange because she had moved to this town from another place and didn't know many people. Also, she didn't have a job at the moment, so Gary couldn't think of any colleagues she might have gone to. Cynthia had been searching for a job for some time now, but unfortunately she hadn't been able to find one yet. As Gary continued to wonder where she could be, he couldn't seem to come up with an answer. He tried calling her multiple times, but her phone was still out of coverage. Feeling worried. Gary decided to put away all the groceries he had bought earlier into the fridge. He then decided to make their home look festive and cheerful by decorating the Christmas tree with some toys and garlands. Gary was starting to feel more nervous and worried as time went by without any sign of Cynthia. However, he suddenly had thought that maybe she had gone to the store. He remembered that he had transferred her some money last night and had asked her to get something for he. That's it. She loves perfume. She must have gone to get her a present. Gary cheered up. He felt relieved and went back to prepare the table for their New Year celebration. He put all the dishes on the table and made sure everything was ready for their festive meal. His friend Sam had borrowed his car while he was away on his business trip. He needed to get the car back for tomorrow, so he decided to walk over to Sam's apartment, which was just a few blocks. When he got to Sam's apartment building, he rang the doorbell, but nobody answered. He noticed that his car was parked outside the building, but he couldn't see any signs of Sam. Gary noticed that the lights were on inside. He must be watching TV or something. He thought Gary felt relieved when Sam finally opened the door. However, he could tell that something was off with Sam's behavior. Sam looked surprised to see him and seemed nervous, which made Gary feel even more curious and. Hey Sam. Good to see you. Listen, I need the car. I gotta run some errands tomorrow. Gary said trying to hide his unease. Sam looked down at his feet and shuffled around uncomfortably. Oh right. Your car. What are you doing here? 
I thought you were away till next week. Sam trailed off, looking more nervous by the. Um, how do you know I was supposed to be back next week? Gary smiled. Can I come in? I'm Gary, your friend. Remember Gary laughed. Sam looked extremely nervous and uneasy as Gary entered his apartment. Gary asked if everything was all right, but Sam didn't respond. As Gary hung up his coat, he noticed Cynthia's fur coat in the wardrobe, which immediately raised his. He made his way to the bedroom and swung the door open only to find Cynthia lying half-naked on Sam's bed. The sheets covering her body. She let out a blood-curdling scream and covered her face when she saw Gary. Gary turned around, slammed the door, and marched back to the wardrobe. He ripped off his coat and snatched the car keys from the shelf. Sam was standing by the front door, but when Gary reached him, he halted and confronted. Suddenly a furious punch sent Sam crashing to the floor. He groaned in agony as he clutched his cheek. Gary walked towards his car and as he approached, he noticed that there was a basket placed on the hood of the car. Just as he was about to inspect it, he saw a woman hastily running away from the car. Excuse me. Is that your thing on the hood? Gary shouted that the woman, he was curious and wanted to chase her down to know more, but he had his own issues to deal with. As he neared his car, he heard a baby. As he leaned on what turned out to be a carry cot, he discovered that there was a baby inside it. Gary was now faced with a bigger problem. He tried to chase after the woman who had left the carry cot on his car, but she was nowhere inside. He searched around the block but couldn't find her. Cool returned to his car and placed a carry cot with the baby on the back seat. Feeling panicked. He decided to head to the closest police station to report the incident. It was already four hours before the new year, a time when nobody was eager to. The officer was heard muttering to himself. Oh my god, not on my shift. Gary was asked to wait. Why do I have to wait? I mean, this is not my baby. Someone left it on the hood of my car. Gary was lamenting, but the officer disappeared around the corner in the hallway. Gary understood that he won't get any help soon, so he decided to do something. He opened the cover of the carry cot and saw some papers, a birth certificate, and a note inside a your baby, your responsibilities. The note said Gary looked at the birth certificate and called his friend Tom, who worked for the agency. He asked Tom to check the database for information on the mother by using her name. Gary, it's a few hours before New Year's. Are you crazy? Tom chuckled. Yeah, I know. But things aren't going well over here. I really need your help, Tom. I've never asked you for anything like this before. It's urgent. Gary Plea. You never change, Gary. You're still out there trying to save the world. Tom remarked and hung up the phone. In about 10 minutes, Tom got back to Gary with an address. Gary thanked Tom and headed there. Nobody answered the door. The apartment was giving off a smell of natural gas. He kicked the door and got in. He put the carry cot down on the stairs and ran through the apartment covering his face with this coat in the kitchen, a young woman sat on the floor silently weeping. What the hell is wrong with you? We need to get out of. Gary turned the gas switch off, opened the window, and helped the woman get on her feet. He quickly led her out of the apartment and sat her down on the stairs. As she looked up at him, he met her gaze. Can you walk, Gary? Shouted, angrily, the woman nodded. Frightened. Gary picked up the carry cot with the baby that had already been crying. Follow me so that she wouldn't have any chances to object. He led her to the car, put the carry cot next to her, and drove to his. Having let the stranger with the baby in his house, Gary noticed that the woman looked like she hadn't been eating well. She also looked like she hadn't slept for a while. He pointed to her room and got her a glass of water. She gulped the water hungrily and raised her eyes. 
Why did you get me out of there? She asked, Wow, are you saying you don't understand why I got you out of there? Gary was getting angry. I don't want to live like this anymore. I really don't. She replied quiet. What the heck is wrong with you people? Gary was upset. Then why did you leave your baby on my car? Gary asked. That was meant for Sam. I thought it was his car. The woman said quietly. Well, that's my car. All right, Sam just borrowed it while I was away. I hate him. I hate his guts. He's such a jerk. She cried. Well, I guess that makes two of us. I don't like him either. Now you can go ahead and use the bathroom. You'll tell me everything. What's your name by the way? Martina. The woman replied pretty name. Are you from South America by any chance? No. My parents, they loved the character for Michelle. She washed her face, came back and sat on the sofa and asked for more water. Gary brought her a glass of water and she started to tell her story. Martina said that she had been working under Sam's supervision. They had started going out and he had promised to take care of her and even marry her on her birthday, Sam invited Martina to his place and they had dinner. There were flowers and candles. He was so romantic. Martina had never had alcohol before. She got drunk quite fast and started to feel dizzy. When she woke up in the morning, she realized she had slept in his. Martina admitted that she used to be a shy girl and had never had a boyfriend before Sam. Sam eventually started to neglect her leaving Martina feeling upset and distressed. What happened at Sam's place had left her in turmoil as it was not what she had expected or hoped for. Martina had always planned to wait until marriage before being intimate with anyone and felt guilty about what had occurred. When she found out that she was pregnant, she approached Sam, but he refused to acknowledge any responsibility claiming that it was not his concern. Martina expressed that she had initially decided to have an abortion and had arranged everything, including finding a clinic. However, when the day of the procedure arrived, she couldn't bring herself to go through with it and fled from the I just couldn't bring myself to kill a living. Being Martinez sobbed her shoulders shaking softly. Gary felt sorry for her and his anger towards his former friend intensified. When my parents noticed my belly, they kicked me out. They told me to give up the baby for adoption. I couldn't do that either. Martina continued her story. Martina explained that some kind people had helped her with clothes for the baby. She went to her grandma's house after giving birth, but her parents found out and gave her an ultimatum, get rid of the baby, or leave. Martina wiped her tears and said she didn't know what to do because she had no money or place to go, so she had to call Sam again. Sam told her to forget about him and never call him. Gary sighed heavily. He couldn't believe that Sam, his friend, all the way from high school could actually turn out to be such a cruel person. Martina kept crying. All right, that's enough. Now please calm down. Gary asked her, the baby started to cry as well, and Martina stood up and picked it up. I don't even have spare clothes for the baby. I think he's wet. Martina cried again. Gary noticed how tenderly she was looking at the baby and it made him feel. Let me see what we can do about it. Gary said and quickly walked away. He came back with a box of old clothes. Here, it's my nephew's stuff in there. My sister moved out of here recently. She forgot her son's clothes. There should be enough Martina looked at Gary and whispered, thank you so much. She hugged the baby tightly to her chest and burst into tears again. I'm sorry, my little baby. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. I will never leave you. Please forgive me. I was a fool. I will never forgive myself for what I had done. Martina was crying, holding her baby to her chest. Gary looked at his watch. Midnight was not too far away. 
It's almost New Year's and we should celebrate. Why don't you go ahead and change the baby's clothes? You can use my sister clothes if you need to. Gary. Gary went to the kitchen and retrieved all the bags from the fridge. He then proceeded to take the food out of the containers and arrange them onto plates. Are you guys ready? Gary shouted from the kitchen. Yes, I'm feeding my son. Martina answered and a little later added, I guess he was hungry. He fell asleep right away. Will you help me put these on the table? Then Gary asked. Martina came out and lowered her head. Thank you so much for everything. I don't even know what would happen if you didn't come after. It's good that you understand. Gary smiled. The table was ready. Champagne, glittered and the glasses, clowns, and great was on TV. Well, Happy New Year. Martina. I'm Gary, by the way. Martina smiled for the first time and nodded. Happy New Year. As the baby slept soundly, Gary and Martina had a long conversation until early morning. This made him realize that he had been too quick to judge her before Martina seemed gentle and innocent. Gary offered her to stay at this place for some time since his three-bedroom apartment was too big for him alone. Martina was too surprised to respond and just blushed. Gary went on to another business trip the next day leaving Martina the keys to his apartment and some money to take care of her son when he returned. A week later, he found the apartment was very tidy and there was a delicious dinner on the table. However, he was even more surprised when Martina told him that she had not spent all the money he had given her. How did you survive, Gary? I was buying the cheapest and most necessary groceries. Thank you so much. I just didn't want to be a burden Martinez said and handed back the rest of the money. Gary couldn't believe how quickly things had changed for him. He was getting promoted at work and this was going to be his last business trip at least for the time being he found it. Amusing how life could take unexpected. Martina and her son stayed in Gary's apartment for about 10 more days. One morning she woke up early and began packing her things, getting ready to leave. She put her son's clothes, which Gary had given her in the carry cot. Martina made breakfast for Gary and sat in the kitchen sipping coffee and waiting for him to wake up. She was already dressed to leave. When Gary woke up and went to the kitchen, he saw Martina and the baby in the carry. And his heart skipped a beat, even though it had only been a couple of weeks, he had grown accustomed to their presence. Good morning. What's going on? Where are you guys going? Gary asked Martina, Gary, I can't stay here forever. I gotta get going. I'm so embarrassed. You've been too nice to us and I can't even repay you. She said, and tears welled up in her eyes. Gary's initial sadness was replaced by a deep sense of affection for Martina and her. He walked over to her and gave her a warm embrace, holding her tightly. After a few moments, he spoke softly. You know, it's funny, but being with you and your son has brought me so much peace and happiness. I've never felt so attached to my home before. You've made it such a warm and comforting place to be, and I really don't want you to go." Martina looked up and smiled after five years. Gary Martina, Johnny and little Sophia were enjoying their time at the. They noticed a man sitting on the bench wearing a tattered sweatshirt and appearing desolate. As he GED at their family. His eyes shifted from Gary to Martina to the kids. Suddenly the man got up and walked towards them. They were all astonished to see that it was Sam, Gary Martina, you two together. Who could have thought Sam said and started. As he glanced over at the children, his eyes lingered in Johnny as he pieced together the similarities between himself and Johnny. His heart swelled with emotion and he couldn't contain his feelings any longer. Tears flowing down his face, he crumpled to the ground and curled up while covering himself with his hands. His heart was overwhelmed with a tumultuous storm of emotions taking control of him. Johnny asked his dad about the man in front of them, 
to which Gary responded with a moment of thoughtfulness. He then looked at Johnny and replied lovingly. Uncle Sam has seen tough times and he smiled reassuringly at his family. He offered assurance, telling them not to worry, insisting they should keep going. Gary and Sam had a small, private moment where Gary told Sam something vital. This was followed by an embrace and Sam soon heading off on his own. What did you share with him that made such a huge impact? Martina posed the question. In response, I gifted Gary with the words he was searching for accompanied with a tender kiss. Taking their little one's hands in his, Gary and the family proceeded on their journey filled with delight and serenity.